My biology role model is Cynthia Kenyon. She is a molecular biologist who focuses on genetic studies and aging research. While she is very intrigued by science now, it was not always the case. Cynthia had dreams of becoming a writer when she left for college. Growing up, she was interested in reading novels and learning more about the world through books. Her love for reading led, to her, led her to a book written by James Watson titled Molecular Biology of the Gene. It was after reading this novel that Cynthia was inspired to get more involved in science and pursue it as her career. Taking a shift in her studies, Cynthia graduated valedictorian of her undergraduate class at the University of Georgia in 1976. She majored in both chemistry and biochemistry. Cynthia then continued her studies at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where she earned her PhD with research focused on gene regulation in E. coli bacteria. After graduating from MIT in 1981, Cynthia moved to Cambridge in the United Kingdom to work on her postdoc at the Medical Research Council Laboratory of Molecular Biology. In 1986, Cynthia became an assistant professor at the University of California, San Francisco. Since 1992, she has been a professor for biochemistry and biophysics at the University of California, San Francisco. It was in San Francisco where she decided to start studying the aging process in C. elegans, a roundworm model organism. However, Cynthia ran into some obstacles concerning the words of her peers. One of her fellow friends warned her about the complexity of the aging process, which led her to believe that others would not want to help her during the investigation. However, quite the opposite occurred when others heard about her intriguing endeavors. Some questions that prompted Cynthia's genetic research included, can our life period be extended? What causes cells to age? Can health aging diseases be prevented? Can humans be altered in a way to live healthier and longer lives? So far, Cynthia has uncovered that there is a hormone in control of the aging process among many organisms. She found that a mutation in the DAP2 hormone has led to a doubled lifespan in her model organism C. elegans. Cynthia also found that a change in the DAP2 gene led to a change in the DAP16 gene as well. She determined that the DAP16 gene controls the growth of the ringworm. Cynthia analyzed that mutations in both of these genes led to both longer and healthier lifespans for the worms without the manipulation of the reproduction or metabolism capabilities of the worms. The manipulation of the DAP2 and DAP16 genes also led to the activation of the FOXO gene, which turns on and off many components to the longevity of life in her organisms. She even found similar results in fruit flies, mice, rats, and monkeys, which led her to believe that she can do the same for humans. Her next step include finding a way to implement this manipulation in humans to promote a healthier, longer life. She co-founded a pharmacy company, Elixir Pharmaceuticals, where she is working to produce a medication that will basically genetically modify the genes of interest to activate the FOXO gene in humans. This would ultimately extend our lifespan and prevent the onset of age-related disease, or so she hopes. The most recent paper Cynthia is an author on is titled How a Mutation That Slows Aging Can Also Disproportionately Extend End-of-Life Decrepitude. This paper introduces a new finding suggesting that the DAP2 mutation also exhibits a long period of being elderly and infirm nearing the end of life. This topic is ideal to study for Cynthia's purposes because I think it's safe to assume that extended decrepitude would not be ideal in humans. Cynthia used a multi-worm tracker computer system to measure the movement of the mutated worms and compared them to the wild type. After delivering a mechanical stimulus every 10 seconds, she analyzed the worms' um, response behaviors and studied them. The mutant worms were found to have a greater average movement speed than the wild type. However, their period of mobility was followed by a long period of no movement. While the worms were still healthy until death, their decrepit, increased lifespan was determined unfavorable. Seeing as I have a grandpa suffering from Alzheimer's disease, I appreciate Cynthia for her hard work to uncover solutions to the onset of age-related diseases. However, what I admire most about her is her hard work and determination. When others told her that the research path she chose would be difficult, she did not give up. While I cannot relate, Cynthia finds joy in finance and economics. She says these are two of her most favorite hobbies to explore. I identify with Cynthia because she is a strong female scientist that I can look up to for motivation. It is evident that Cynthia did not give up when the studies got hard, and I hope I can follow in her footsteps.